Reports and images on social media received from Iran indicate that tanks and military vehicles which belong to the Afghan army were seen in Tehran and other parts of Iran. Iran had promised to resume fuel deliveries to Afghanistan last week, which the Taliban need to prevent a collapse in the economy. Tehran has adopted a friendly posture toward the Taliban, unlike past relations which were marked by tensions. Iranian officials have not yet reacted to the news. However, if Iran has made a deal with the Taliban to receive some of the American military hardware given to the Afghan army or left behind, it would claim a big victory against the United States. The reports received so far are brief, and there is no information about the kind and quantity of hardware delivered to Iran. Photos have emerged showing armored Humvees being transported from the eastern parts of the country toward Tehran, on the Semnangarmsar Road. Bismala Mohammadi, a former Afghan Defense Ministry official published one of the photos referring to Iran as a bad neighbor and saying Afghanistan misfortune will not last forever. The loss of these vehicles is another embarrassment for the U.S. and could be damaging in the future if these vehicles are used to either extract valuable technical information or to impersonate U.S. forces in Iraq, Jonathan Kitson, a writer on defense and security issues, told Arab News. Serious questions should be asked of Washington's intelligence agencies, who wrongly believed this scenario wouldn't happen. The propaganda blow comes after the Taliban were seen parading American kit and equipment in Kabul after U.S. forces left Afghanistan's capital on August 31, the deadline set for U.S.-led forces to leave the country under the Doha peace agreement between Washington and the militant group. The convoy included Humvees, the bread and butter of American military maneuverability, and heavily armored mine-resistant vehicles. A social media channel that posted the clip claimed that the Iranians had also recovered some U.S. tanks. Over 70,000 vehicles were provided to Afghan security forces before their defeat to the Taliban. Washington says Iran, its main rival in the Middle East, supported the Taliban's sudden rise to power by training them in military doctrine and the use of specialist equipment. The U.S. military likely abandoned tens of millions of dollars worth of aircraft, armored vehicles and sophisticated defensive systems in the rush to leave the airport in Kabul safely. Marine Gen. Kenneth McKenzie, head of U.S. Central Command, said some of the equipment had been demilitarized, essentially rendered inoperable. Troops probably used thermate grenades, which burn at temperatures of 4,000 degrees, to destroy key components of the equipment, according to a Defense Department official who was not authorized to speak publicly. Some pieces of equipment probably were blown up. Another defense official, also not authorized to speak publicly, acknowledged that a blast heard last week at the airport was related to destroying equipment. McKenzie rattled off a list of the items Monday during the announcement of the end of the 20-year involvement in Afghanistan, America's longest war. As many as 70 MRAPs, mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles built to withstand blasts from improvised explosive devices, were left behind. They have been credited by the Pentagon with saving the lives and limbs of thousands of troops. The vehicles cost about $1 million apiece. The military left behind 27 Humvees, light tactical vehicles, that were replaced by MRAPs in Iraq and Afghanistan after they proved vulnerable to eat attacks. A Humvee's price tag was less than one-third of an MRAP. McKenzie didn't specify how many such units, which at $10 million apiece detect and shoot down incoming rockets and artillery and mortar rounds, were left behind. But he did say they were kept until the end to ensure that the Kabul airfield was defended from rocket attacks such as the one launched Monday.
Certainly, our objective was not to leave them with any equipment, but that is not always an option when you are looking to retrograde and move out of a war zone, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said. Mackenzie stressed that the equipment would be of no use in combat, but it will likely be displayed by the Taliban as trophies of their decades-long fight to retake their country. The systems and material will have little more than symbolic value, said Lauren Thompson, a defense industry consultant and military analyst at the Lexington Institute. helicopters are the most expensive item, but the ability of the Taliban to operate and maintain them without outside help is modest," Thompson said. The absence of U.S. logistical support will lead to a steady decay in the state of the residual Afghan military arsenal. Even small arms will gradually become unusable if not properly maintained. MRAPs are real gas guzzlers, so their value in a country where fuel supplies are scarce and terrorist attacks have largely ceased is doubtful. All told, the Pentagon left behind tens of billions of dollars worth of equipment given to Afghan security forces. The U.S. government spent $83 billion to train and equip the Afghan army, according to the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. The Pentagon and White House had maintained that Afghan army ranks totaled 300,000 soldiers, but in reality there were far fewer. In the weeks and months before the Taliban takeover, facing the withdrawal of support from U.S. support, many Afghan troops stopped fighting for a corrupt, ineffective government.